Hi, my name is Kathy Avery. I am a nurse. I am with Clinical Scholars, cohort number four. We are from Asheville, North Carolina. We have been working for one year on the Clinical Scholars program um, around our HELP project, our Wicked Problem, and it stands for the Health Education Leading to Prevention. Um, what we have started to do in our igniting of this project was to figure out who was going to be on the project with me. And I had to find scholars uh, and leaders that were in the uh, academic and clinical world. And once I got that done, I had to let, we had to sit down and talk about what it was that as a community nurse, I saw in a community that I felt like that we could address together over three years with the Robert Wood Johnson grant. And those things were senior living, a homeless, and the disabled living in communities together where they're all in there together, but there's no one in low wealth and low income areas that really address their healthcare needs, especially around the social determinants of health. So we decided that we would try to figure out how to be in these areas, give them the help they need, whether it is around transportation, food insecurity, mental health, or physical health, and see if we could, number one, find out what their needs are and then address those needs. So during our first year, we were inspired as we have gone out to do this work to see all the challenges that we came up with that we were able to tackle. So one of the challenges that we found that we did not expect was COVID-19. So during that time, we have had to literally find ways to make sure that we can, can communicate with our residents in our senior living environment, um, what it's gonna take for them to be safe. So our community engagements, we wanted to continue. So what we did was use the three W's. And the three W's of course is to wait six, and make sure we stay six feet away, that we wash our hands, and that we wear a mask. So we wanted to make sure that we drill that into our residents as we tried to continue to provide food insecurity and make sure that they got the things that they needed for them to stay safe during COVID and that we're educating them uh, on ways that they can stay safe and also help each other during this time. Uh, we had to rearrange, we had to get together and talk about how we could safely continue to work in our communities. We had to figure out how we're going to train our community health workers to work safely in the community. So COVID was definitely an uh, unexpected challenge that I think that we um, definitely um, managed. One of the things we did is, and uh, one of the one inspirational things that we did was we had a a um, testing site there at Arrowhead where we have been, um, did the testing and at the last report, all the testing that we did on site at that time of all the people that came out to be tested where it was 100% negative. Um, and I think that shows the amazing work that we did around COVID uh, with the, the three W's and educating and, and educating our senior and senior living of what it would take for them to stay safe and at lower risk because they have so many comorbidities and so many health issues. Um, one of the other things that, that we did was make sure we did the three W's when we did our community engagement, when we still needed to address their food insecurity and make sure that they had the foods that were healthy. We also gave them mask, hand sanitizer, tissue, um, at the beginning of COVID to make sure that they had the tools and the, and the resources to keep themselves healthy. So COVID was a challenge, but I think it was a challenge that we managed quite well. And the data shows that as well. Uh, one of the things we saw at the beginning when we started to do our project with the homeless living in residents with senior livers, 
and disabled people. And those being in the same, in the same residence has been a challenge as well. But I've been so inspired to find out that what we do as far as education and getting them the help that they need, getting them to their doctor's appointments, getting the transportation that they need to get where they need to go and not have to sit and wait for some of the other transportation agencies that you have to go, go all day. Some of our seniors that use transportation also had, was really concerned about going to their doctor's appointment and having to ride the, the mobile units all day long to get to get back home after they'd gone to the doctor, which took a lot of energy and they were tired. Or the homeless population that have mental health issues and substance abuse issues would not go and get an appointment and go to their doctor's appointment and keep them because they had to ride um, those type services. But having our own transportation service who are trained to take the patient, they stay with the client, and they bring them back home has increased our ability to get people to and from the doctor and to keep them uh, going to their appointments. So this has been a great challenge that we have tackled. And I am so inspired that we have been able to do this and make sure that some of the problems that we saw when we started this project has been addressed and it's working very well. We found that people get homeless people put into an apartment, but then the following is not as robust as it should be. And that these people have mental health and substance abuse problems. And there they are with senior citizens, all trying to live together in safety and good health, but there no one is trying to help them solve the problems consistently that brought them to be homeless in the first place. So we saw that as our second problem. So we started working with mental health providers and management to see what we could do to step in to try to help them become more healthy, keep their mental health appointments, do some physical um, assessments with, with, with them to find out what their healthcare needs are and see if we can provide some of that. And as a community nurse, I'm able to try to talk to them and educate them on their physical health as well as trying to connect them for their mental health. Then we found out the third problem, which was cognitive disorders. We found that a lot of senior citizens, especially, were having problems um, with changes in their cognitive abilities and their cognitive health. And what we've notice was some of them live alone, some of them didn't have family, or if they did have family, the family didn't want to be involved, or didn't know how to be involved, but getting them diagnosed. And this brought us to our, our policy change, or our procedure change, with adult protective services and mental health, and trying to figure out how can we help doctors and physicians and social workers and other team members around getting diagnoses for people that we've found with cognitive changes. In a way that is very inspiring that we were able to do is we talked to the doctor that does the curriculum for the residents in our residency program at Mayhek. And he is going to, after reading some of our case studies, he is going to actually change the curriculum so that doctors feel more comfortable with trying to diagnose and when they get them diagnosed, where do they go from there? So we're still working on the policy change of adult protective services, being able to feel comfortable following their procedure of getting a diagnosis for clients that need them and not having to wait until they pile up a lot of visits where they're seeing these changes before they're able to do anything. So that's ongoing, but I'm very inspired and we're all very excited about being able to work around that policy change. Um, also, our impact is going to be duplicating this model throughout our local area, our local communities, but also duplicating it in North Carolina and the United States, because I honestly think that this model of community people, clinicians, professionals, community health workers, all working together in the community to address their community's needs 
is the best model to get, bring back better health to our communities, especially around the social determinants of health. That's where you address people's transportation needs, their healthcare needs, their education, their housing needs, their medical needs holistically. And all of us working together will bring about a better and healthier community. And I am truly inspired that we have that impact in this area. And it's only gonna grow by the end of our clinical scholars um, funding. And we're hoping that showing that this model works will help us get stakeholders and further funding so that we can make this model, not just a model, but an inspiration and an impact that we can put together to address these issues long-term in our community. Thank you. And our project focused very simply on creating a community health worker program in a public housing complex. And when we started, it was something that was a lot of ideas, a lot of meetings in place, a lot of community being pulled in. And obviously COVID cut that short very quickly. So we were not able to have as many interactions and as much work happening on the ground as we had hoped. However, we did play a vital role and continue to play a vital role in this housing complex um, by distributing what we call just little gift bags. And these gift bags are full of not only educational materials on COVID and other educational materials, but also some healthy food. We made sure that individuals who could not get out and go to supermarkets and stores had some fresh fruits and vegetables delivered to them. And of course, masks and hand sanitizer, we included those. And one of the anecdotal pieces of evidence that this was very helpful was the incredibly low COVID rates up until now that have um, happened in this housing complex, less than a handful of individuals out of over 120 different housing units in this facility have developed COVID. And, and so we are continuing to keep engagement happening there. Um, and I do have to say that a lot of it is due to the clinical scholars training that, that we had. We had ideas in mind, but initially our team went through all of those assessments, right? All of the assessments that are the Myers-Briggs, the different um, thinking assessments, the conflict resolution, the implicit bias trainings, and all of those contributed a great deal because not only did it help us as individuals to better understand how we lead, but it also helped us how to work with community better, how to understand their point of view and where they're coming from. And um, going forward, one of the things that I really look forward to in the communities in, in particular is just dealing with the, the COVID challenge as it's happening and evolving, particularly with vaccinations. And so vaccinations are tricky, but we are engaging the community um, around the educational components and really making sure that we provide a lot of materials on the vaccines and what is out there and, and really trying to figure out in terms of how we go forward, how to structure this program so that we're meeting the needs of the individuals. And, and one example that I have in particular was this one gentleman who came and he said he needed help with some cleaning in his apartment. And one of our community health workers that we trained, and we're training community health workers from the actual housing complex, went into his apartment and realized very quickly that it was a hoarding situation. And so we connected him with resources and actually helped to provide some resources to get his apartment cleaned out so that he's able to live in a much healthier way and then connected him with not only the, the clinical side of things, but also the behavioral health side to address the hoarding issue that was there. And, and that's what we're trying to do is, is to trying to very directly find those resources, connect them with the residents so that going forward, 
it's a sustainable model. And we're actually training the, the community health workers who are from this community so that they can provide that support to the residents there. Um, Long-term impact, what we think of besides the sustainability pieces, how can we replicate this? How can we go forward and actually have this be a model that happens in public housing all over the city of Asheville and the county and other regions here in Western North Carolina and potentially the state? And one of the big pieces of that is actually engaging some different health systems, some primary care offices and social services, a lot of different groups that are not typically at the table directly with housing units. And, and that's what we're trying to do. And that's our policy side of the world in creating a little bit of a different approach where we approach it from the practical side, take care of real day-to-day -day needs and then more importantly, how do you fix it long-term? Well, that's by changing the policy components of it. And so that's what we're doing here in Asheville, North Carolina. And, and once again, our project is called Asheville Help. If you're considering the clinical scholars, I would highly recommend it because it takes a real world wicked problem and it helps to give you not only the resources in terms of how do you address it, but also the leadership components of it. How do you bring everyone up on the team together so that they not only become leaders in this specific problem, but in the community even much more so. Um, so I highly recommend the Clinical Scholars Program for a multitude of reasons and look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you. <music>